Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be factoring a 10th degree polynomial. We have x to the 10th power plus x to the 5th power plus 1, and we're going to factor this. At this point, you may just want to pause the video and give this problem a try. All right, let's get started. So I'll be showing you two methods here, and then so you can make a comparison, which method is better for you. So the first method is going to involve some manipulations. Okay, so bear with me while I do these manipulations. Early on, remember in one of the videos, we factored uh, an expression like x to the fifth power plus x plus one, I believe it was that one. So we used some manipulations there too, but this is actually 10th power. So it's gonna be uh, taking uh, maybe a little longer than that, but here's how we proceed. Okay, so I start with x to the 10th power here, right? And then I just subtract from it x to the seventh power and then you're going to know in a little bit why I do that. And then I'll be adding the x to the seventh power. And then I will be subtracting the fourth power. Okay. And then I'm going to be adding x to the fifth power, which is there. Obviously, we have it, right? So we have to add that. So let's see what we have so far. So we subtracted and added x to the seventh. So we're good there. We added x to the fifth. We're good there. But we just subtracted an extra x to the fourth. So what, what that means is we need to add that, right? But we're not going to add that yet. So I'm, I'm going to subtract x squared from this, okay? And then I'll be adding x to the fourth power. But notice that I subtracted x squared, so I have to add it, plus x squared. And finally, I'm going to add the 1, okay? So this should be balanced now. Let's go ahead and check it out. Negative x to the 7, positive x to the 7, negative x to the 4th, positive x to the 4th, x to the fifth is there, negative x squared, positive x squared, and one. Okay, all is good, all is well. Now, what are we gonna do? And why did I break it down this way? You're going to see in a little bit. Okay, so what, what I'm gonna do next is I'll be breaking these down, like grouping them, right, into groups. But this group is going to be uh, three terms, okay? And if you remember, we factored this before x to the fourth plus x squared plus one can be factored by completing the square and that's going to help us. Okay, let's proceed. So here I can write as x to the seventh multiplied by x cubed minus one plus x to the fourth times x cubed minus one plus x squared times x cubed minus one plus this guy over here, x to the fourth plus x squared plus one. Okay, awesome. Now what I see here is among the first three terms, if you don't count the last three, we have a common factor, which is what? x cubed minus one. So let's go ahead and take that out. x cubed minus one factored out. We'll have x to the seventh plus x to the fourth plus x squared, okay? Then this will be plus x to the fourth plus x squared plus one. Now we know that x cubed minus one is factorable, but let's go ahead and work on factoring this expression here. And remember how we factored this? We said that, okay, if I add x squared and subtract x squared, I do get difference of two squares, right? So this can be written as what? Difference of two squares, so it's gonna be x squared plus x plus one and x squared minus x plus one. Okay, awesome. So this quartic polynomial can be factored like that. What about the rest of it? Okay, the rest of it is gonna look like this. So if you go ahead and factor this part, we're going to have x minus one multiplied by x squared plus x plus one, which is what makes this factorable, times the seventh plus the fourth plus the second, okay? And then plus our quartic, which was factored as x squared plus x plus one times x squared minus x plus one. Awesome. So in this case, what do we have? We have a common factor. What is that common factor? The common factor is x squared plus x plus one, which means that we can factor this again. That was the whole purpose actually, to get that factor, which is very, very special. And you must have seen it in one of the tweets that I just recently replied to, 
because that was a problem about finding the sum of the coefficients that uh, had the powers of x that were divisible by 3. So if you kind of take a look at that, you'll also see some relationship there as well. Okay, so let's proceed. What am I supposed to do next? Well, at this point, I can just go ahead and take out x squared plus x plus 1, which is, again, a special factor. And then I'm going to multiply that. And let me tell you why that's a special factor. Well, maybe not. That. I won't tell you. Okay, fine. So what we're going to get from here is x squared plus x plus 1 is out. So we have x minus 1 multiplied by x to the 7th plus x to the 4th plus x squared. And then plus I'll have x squared minus x plus 1. Okay, there we go. So we just need to distribute a little bit. We got one of the factors. Nice and clear. And then from here, let's see what we're going to get. Okay, I'm going to multiply these, distribute x to the 8th plus x to the 5th plus x cubed minus x to the 7th minus x to the 4th minus x squared plus x squared minus x plus 1. So if you go ahead and simplify this, that's going to be our final answer. x squared plus x plus 1 times what? We have x to the 8th here. We have minus x to the 7th here. And then we have plus x to the fifth, right? And then I have minus x to the fourth here, plus x cubed. Okay. And then x squared cancels out. And then I have minus x plus 1. Okay? So basically, this is going to be, and this is not factorable. You can check that uh, this polynomial has no factors in Q, which is the set of rational numbers. Okay? Obviously, you can factor it over the complex numbers, but we're not interested in that. So basically, this is, these are the factors of x to the 10th plus x to the 5th plus 1, and it is just equal to that. All right? So let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. And when we do the second method, we're not going to complete it because uh, it's kind of time consuming, but I'll show you the idea and then we'll go back to this and we'll compare those two. Okay? So let's go ahead and proceed with the second method. Here we go. Okay. So the second method involves using some algebraic tricks. L, well, we did some manipulations here, like kind of like completing the square, but we did complete other things here. With the second method, we proceed as follows. So we start with x to the 10th plus x to the 5th plus 1, right? Now, what I'm going to do here is pretty interesting, and sometimes we use this. I'm going to take this and multiply it by another polynomial of fifth degree, which is x to the fifth minus 1, and divide by that. Obviously, x to the fifth equals 1 doesn't really give us any solutions of the original, so this is okay to do. It's not really going to change anything. And plus, we're not looking for solutions. We're looking for a way to factor it. Now, what is so good about doing this? You'll notice in a little bit. So if I consider this like, this is x to the fifth squared. This is x to the fifth. So if you call like x to the fifth is equal to y, you'll get something like y squared plus y plus 1 multiplied by y minus 1, which gives you y cubed minus 1. So this is kind of like difference of two cubes in a sense. So that should give you x to the power 15 minus 1 divided by x to the fifth minus 1. Okay, so what? I've, what happens if you do polynomial division? You get the original problem. So we're not going to do that because that's going to bring us back to square one. What are we going to do here? We're going to factor the top in a different way. How? Well, 15 is 3 times 5. So if you can write it as a sum of or difference of two cubes, that means you can also write it as a difference of two fifth powers. How is that possible? Well, if you write it this way, then you'll see what I'm talking about. All right. So let's go ahead and explore this. So now I do have difference of two fifth powers. So now if you consider, okay, say x cubed is equal to u, all right, then you have something like u to the fifth power minus one divided by u minus one. And as you know, this can be factored as u minus one multiplied by u to the fourth plus u cubed plus u squared plus u plus one. Just like normal, you know, we can factor the difference of two fifth powers. Cool. You know that when the power is odd, you can always factor it, 
If the power is even, then the sign needs to be a minus sign. Okay, so this can be factored as then x cubed minus 1 times, remember x cubed equals u. So u to the 4th means it's x to the 12th, and then I have x to the 9th, and then I have x to the 6th, and then I have x cubed, and then 1. Okay, all over x to the 5th minus 1. Obviously, that's also factorable if you factor it by the same method. You're going to be getting x minus 1 multiplied by x to the 4th plus x cubed plus x squared plus x plus 1. Awesome. So this is going to be my factor. Let's clean this area a little bit so we can see the result better. All right. So this is my result. Now, what am I going to do? Well, I do have, as you see here, I do have difference of two cubes. So I can factor that, right? Let's go ahead and factor x minus 1. And then I'll get x squared plus x plus 1. And then the 12th degree, x to the 12th plus x to the ninth, plus x to the sixth, plus x to the third, plus 1, all over x minus 1, multiply by x to the fourth, plus x cubed, plus x squared, plus x plus 1. Okay, awesome. Well, you might be thinking, oh, did this make things any better? Because things are getting worse. Look at this. We have 12th power now. We started with 10th power. But don't worry. We'll take care of this, and I'll show you how. So we're going to go ahead and cancel these out. Obviously, x squared plus x plus 1 is not divisible by x to the 4th plus x cubed plus x squared plus x plus 1, right? Obviously, because it's a lower degree. Therefore, and we know that we started off with x to the 10th, so we know that this is equal to x to the 10th plus x to the 5th plus 1. So this is a polynomial. This is supposed to be a polynomial. Therefore, this 12th degree polynomial is divisible by the 4th degree polynomial. How do you find the quotient? Aha, that's a long process. I don't think you want to do that, right? Well, maybe. Well, you must use long division, unfortunately. And that's a really, really long process. So I'm not going to get into that. But let me tell you what. When you divide the x to the 12th by x to the 4th, you're going to get a polynomial of 8th degree. And guess what? We already have that, right? So that's going to be the answer. So if you just go ahead and write that here, this is going to be after long division, We've done long division without doing long division, obviously, right? We're going to be getting x to the 8th minus x to the 7th, right? We got x to the 8th minus x to the 7th, and now what did we get? Plus x to the 5th minus x to the 4th, plus x cubed minus x plus 1, all right? So the long polynomial, long division of these two polynomials should give you this result. You can definitely always check that out. But this should equal that. Okay? Good luck with long division. Haha. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's the end of it. This is the second method. Yes, long division is very time consuming, by the way. So I really like the first method better manipulating in that way. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.